Oh, hi guys, Hidden Hermit here. How you doing? So I'm going to do something a little bit different today, and I want to try and make it a a, a a regular feature. So this is what I call, well, what I am calling, what's the vibe? So here is a beautiful hand-drawn map of the sky at the moment. It is indeed a September the fifth. It's a Thursday. I am in Glasgow, which is in Scotland. You may not be, but that doesn't matter. It is 7 a.m. in the morning, which means it could be a different time where you are. That's how the planet works in its whole spherical running around the galaxy kind of vibe. And I say the word vibe because I'm thinking I'm going to be calling this what's the vibe? What's the sky vibe, if you like? And there's going to be three elements to this. So as you can see, there is a map. As a, you know, you, you might recognise this as a natal chart. This is what's going on in the sky at the moment. If you can't read the numbers, that's fine, because I'm going to be reading them out to you. Um, there's also another element to this. So this, I can't do anything about this. I have absolutely no control about the speed of the planets or, um, you know, where they are, which is annoying. I've tried. I've tried to tell Jupiter not to go retrograde. And I've tried to tell Uranus to... to just, you know, stay where it is for a few years, but they won't listen. And, you know, there's, there's no point even having a conversation with the moon. She just does whatever she wants. But anyway, um, it it's important to me. Uh, this is something I actually do on a daily basis in a, in a slightly different form. I usually use rocks. So, for example, I'd have mercury, a um, bit of citrine there. But for, for the purposes of this, we're going to be using paper and toner. Um, so yeah, I mean, look at the sky at the moment. It's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, there's this huge square here. Jupiter right in the middle here is squaring pretty much everything. He's squaring this big uh, planetary party in Virgo over here. Uh, there's Neptune and Lilith. I do include Lilith and Chiron because I think, you know, well, they're kind of cool more than anything else. <laughs> uh, but Jupiter's squaring them all. Uh, whereas Pluto and Saturn, who are usually, you know, the, the, the grumpy people of the the, the zodiac, the, the night sky. Um, Saturn, they're, they're actually sextiling and trining most people. So uh, <laughs> it's funny how they've not got an aspect with, with Jupiter. But it does appear that um, Jupiter's taken on the role of a... I know it's kind of like the, the the grumpy dad whose lawnmower is broken, and um, he's he's like watching telly and he's hogging the remote control, being really passive aggressive, doing his own thing down here in his, in his own sign of Sagittarius. To be fair, <clears throat> and it's almost as if Pluto and Saturn, uh, which some people consider to be the the greater malefics, um, they're actually trying to be nice to everybody <laughs> for, for for a change uh the moon and chiron are just doing their own little thing they've got their nice little trine going on there so there's going to be a fire sign trine with chiron and aries and the moon has just entered sagittarius literally uh two hours ago i think maybe three so that's quite nice which is interesting so you know chiron's in aries so the the, the bigger picture the collective is trying to heal things with leadership with service to others and it's aspecting that Sagittarius moon which uh, brings out on a personal level brings out um, wistful feelings of travel and wisdom and higher thoughts so it's a shame that the moon does go around so quickly because that's a nice harmonious aspect I think we, sh we could try and revel in a little bit <laughs> Finally, uh, Uranus is up here doing its own thing, making absolutely no aspects whatsoever to anybody, which I find very, very suspicious. I don't like it when I lose track of Uranus because um, when I do, boom, something happens. Now, Uranus is currently in opposition to my natal Uranus, so you could, you could actually work out my age there. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm a hot mess of confusion and midlife crisis or not you know whatever but yeah so that's the sky at the moment and you, obviously you've got this opposition going on here um neptune squaring everybody's squaring jupiter neptune is opposite the sun at the moment but it, it makes an interesting pattern i mean it's a quite a clear right angle for a start 
but th there you go. But that's just one aspect of it. I can't do anything about this. There's, there's, you know, you can't put money in the meter to make everything go quicker. It's just how it is. It's, it's the mechanics of the universe. So I like to introduce a little bit of fate. So here are some of my uh, astro astrology dice. Uh, to give them their technical terms, they are D12s. Uh, these ones have uh, the ten, the seven classical planets, the three outer planets, and the two nodes of the moon. Uh, these ones have the twelve signs of the zodiac. There are also ones that have bog standard boring numbers. I only use one of those. This is to uh, introduce an element of fate to the situation. So dice have traditionally been associated with. Um, divination to, to be fair and um, there was a news report this week from I don't know somewhere the BBC maybe where they'd found some carved quartz 20 sided dice from Roman archaeological discs they looked awesome um, and the prevalent theory is they use them for divination as opposed to gambling and that's what the other the other thing dice have been used for so either divination or gambling Hey. <laughs> uh, interestingly, um, I'm sure many of you know that in early tarot cards, the magician card, uh, he had dice on his table. So there you go. I'm not pretending to be a magician in any way. Or am I? So that's this element of fate. You'll see how they are used in in a moment. And finally, um, yes, of course. Let's. One of my good friends here is Verdi. Verdi is. Verdi's here to represent the more intuitive side of A, what I do, and A, what we should all do, and A, what I do, B, what we should all do, and C, it's fun. <laughs> um, Verdi he is here, one of my one of my favourite working decks. Oh, look at that, there's the High Priestess, the moon. Nice aspect with Chiron, thank you very much, High Priestess. Uh, she, she, Verdi's here to represent the, the more intuitive side to our nature. So you have the mechanical side of the universe, you have this element of fate and chance, and you also have that sort of reaching for higher knowledge and using your intuition. What is he talking about, I hear you ask? He's just blethering away, not making any sense. So let me just let me just demonstrate, shall I? Let me just demonstrate. So as I said, I do this on a daily basis. Um, I haven't done it today because I wanted to do it for you guys. I'm basically looking for an area of focus or uh, a message from uh, something cosmic, if you like. And the way I do it is like this. Boom. So just for um, a little bit of background, I have uh, five of the blue dice, which are the planets. I have, nope, I'm lying. I've got five of the blue dice plus two of these so i got seven of the planet dice i've got seven of the of the green dice i think maybe i should have counted it first yeah i do and i have one of the numbers and this is what i do with it i take out the nodes of the moon because i'm well <clears throat> it's always fun to work with the nodes but they just confuse me they confuse me so they'll confuse you i'm i'm looking for something a little more straightforward we pick out the planets so there's one of Eunice, and what I'm looking for is double messages, okay? Now, you're, this will become clear once uh, you see what's going on. So there's Aquarius down there. We've got uh, a bit of a sun vibe going on. We've got the fourth house. Dude, thank you very much. Capricorn. Aries. I don't have a dice for Lilith or Chiron, but, you know, I just have to live with that. And it's already becoming quite apparent that there isn't going to be a message. <laughs> oh, no, there no, there still isn't going to be a message. What I'm looking for is a doubling up of messages, basically. So we've got some Mars going on here. Cancer, Scorpio, Capricorn. We've got two Capricorn. We've got a message at last. At last. Taurus. Taurus. Oh, we do have another message. Uranus and Taurus. Neptune, we've got no Pisces. Scorpio, we've got no moon as well. It's, so this is quite, this is somewhat disappointing to be perfectly honest because I was hoping for a, a, a kind of an illustration of 
how I look for things. So I've arranged the dice in their positions, and we've got this Stellarium over here with the Sun, Venus, and Mars, but that, for me, does not count as a message. Should we get rid of those? I think we shall. Um, the fourth house over here, but they're also, yeah, we've got Jupiter in the fourth. There you go. There you go. Uh, it's funny, isn't it? I described Jupiter as being a grumpy father, and the fourth is the idea of family, maybe from a more motherhood point of view, but interesting. Let's get rid of that Scorpio, the Cancer, the Aries, Neptune, Aquarius. So there, these are the messages that we're looking for. Uranus and Taurus, two, a double Capricorn message, and there are, of course, two planets in Capricorn at the moment, and Jupiter in the fourth house. So at this point, now that I have a focus, and it is interesting, despite the fact that I use, um, I think I use 12 die in total, the message is always number three, sometimes two. Now Verdi has been cleansed and shuffled off camera. I'm just doing this to uh, give you an idea that it's still kind of shuffled. And let's just look for these messages. So what is the message from Uranus in Taurus? Got the six of wands, now that is interesting. What is the message from Capricorn? Which contains planets, but that's not the focus. And we've got the tower, boom. And finally, Jupiter in the fourth. What is the message from Jupiter in the fourth? Hey, page of cups, that's really weird. I thought, I thought the page of cups would come out today at some point. Right, so what does this mean? So the Six of Wands, that idea of magnanimous victory. Uranus is, in fact, retrograding to us. So it's trying to mix up our environment. It's trying to awaken the things that are around us. Now, is this message kind of suggesting that it's been successful in doing so? Now, if you look at the political landscape, especially in the UK, things are getting completely mixed up at the moment. It's very confusing so I'm kind of suggesting that Uranus itself in Taurus is being successful in what it's doing Uranus and it's Uranus is retrograde as well so its power is somewhat diminished a little bit and it's going back the way towards Aries now uh, I I yeah I don't have to use my intuition to know that um, whatever Uranus is doing it's doing a very good job at the moment it's pretty scary <coughs> Uranus, you need to keep an eye on her, him, her. I kind of think of her as a her, but... Anyway, so uh, the Capricorn messages from Capricorn. Pluto and Saturn are in Capricorn, both retrograde at the moment. Saturn goes direct. I think it's the end of this week at the moment. I think so, yeah. So the Tower, like that kind of sense of force. Now, I always have to have a look to see why... Um, I mean, the Tower is Mars and also Pluto sometimes, so... Um, Saturn and uh, Pluto are actually making quite a nice aspect with Mars at the moment. There's a nice trine going on there. So again, I mean, is Capricorn, um, is it, yeah, I kind of get the feeling that it's, it's this, it's the harmonious aspect. It totally is. I mean, when Jupiter's being grumpy and rubbing everybody the wrong way, bizarrely, Saturn and Pluto are rubbing everybody the right way. And, that's unusual for, for those guys. You know, Saturn comes along, gives it its discipline. Um, Saturn's very at home in Capricorn as well, you know, that, that idea of that materialism, the lord of the gates of matter, if you like. But what, what's the tower mean? What, what's this message here? It's quite, it's a little bit disturbing, if you ask me, because everything's been nice for for them from their point of view. But there could be a little bit of a shock to the system at some point. Be wary of that. Especially with the Jupiter thing. Ooh. <laughs> Finally, Jupiter in the fourth. Grumpy old dad there. Being grumpy. But we got a message of the Page of Cups. So the Page of Cups always tells me that um, we should be a little more open with our emotions. You know, a little more curious with them. Try and explore them a little bit. So um, I like to think that this is <laughs> this is the world saying to Jupiter, look, just open up, just be, just be a little bit nicer. You know, you are, you are direct now, and you're going to start making some good aspects soon. So I think the idea for us is. 
you need to be aware that all these astronomical things going on, astrological things going on, are going to be rub people the wrong way. But don't take it to heart. Don't take it to heart, and don't don't allow yourself to to be rubbed the wrong way. <laughs> Starting to sound a little bit rude, but um. Yeah, so you need to embrace like a little bit of uh, openness and curiosity with your emotions, with your dealings with other people. Um, a lot of other people may be feeling kind of highly strung and a little bit put out and a little bit of out of sorts at the moment with all these strange things going on in the sky. But that doesn't mean that you have to bow down and, and you know, be more of a knight. Um, let's embrace these youthful page energies and just be a little bit more open um, listen to what people are saying. Perhaps keep your mouth shut when people are saying things with a little bit of gusto. And just consider, you know, it doesn't mean you have to bow down and, and be weak. Not at all. Just be aware of what's around you. Your emotions at this point could be key. So that makes sense. And this makes sense. The the message of the tower from Capricorn. It's just a little bit perturbing. I've talked for too long this video probably won't upload for another week <laughs> so i'm going to leave it at that i'm going to streamline this process i just want to explain how this worked and um i'm going to go it's time for breakfast i think thank you very much